All right, so in this first video, what I want to do is just show you how to make a basic supply and demand graph like the one you see uh, right here. And so just a couple things before getting going. Um, I use Mac um, and I use PowerPoint. And so first of all, I will say Mac and Windows have very similar compatibility in terms of uh, functionality within PowerPoint itself. A few things are different, um, not drastically different. Um, even though this is a Mac, I actually prefer Windows um, because of some of their stuff is just uh, works a little bit better when it comes to animations, but um, and just the helping me set those up. But the other thing uh, I will say is that um, I do not do anything in Google Slides. Um, I've just found that in, in terms of being able to draw shapes and animations and uh, that like Google Slides just does not hold um, any water up against uh, uh, against PowerPoint. And so I use PowerPoint for these. Um, the nice thing about that is, is once you make them in your slides, you can save them. Um, I'll screenshot pictures of them sometimes to put on tests uh, and all sorts of different things like that. But I just think PowerPoint is in incredibly simple to use once you kind of understand what's available within um, once once you understand what's available within PowerPoint. So let's go ahead and start and take a look here. And so again, our goal is to make a graph that looks uh, similar to this. So I'm going to go to a new slide here. And the first thing I'm actually going to do is lay my base layer. Uh, and for me, my base layer is my graph. And so I've, I, I don't know, I guess I kind of cheated with this. Um, but I always um, insert just a blank graph that looks like this. And so I made this in Adobe Illustrator. And um, I have this actually in the description of this video so you can download it and use it um, made it a really big png and so you can um, scale it and everything like that to whatever size graph you need um, for your slides i'm a big fan of kind of just doing like i, I kind of what i call the 50 50 rule um, where i just use 50 percent of my slide for um, content and um, you know any information that the students might need and then i use the other half for the graph because i want to make sure that the graphs uh, are easy to see, easy to understand, easy to see different points on the graph. And so um, I always put that down first. The other thing about this graph that I really like is that it is transparent. And so what that means uh, is uh, if you were to put into place um, some sort of like text box, right? And so uh, let's say that you have a text box here. Uh, it's transparent, meaning that when you overlay it, it, it goes through the text, um, which is kind of nice just because you can put text right up against it um, or whatever, and it's not going to get in the way. Um, so anyway, we've got this now, again, as we know, the first thing that students have to do every single time is label their axes. And so, um, I always will just make sure that first and foremost, I got those. I'll take my price one on my Y axis. Um, I'll even rotate it to, I'll rotate it 90 degrees. So we can put it along there. You don't have to do that. That's just what I like to do. Um, and then also, Control copy, control paste. Um, also, control D is just to straight up duplicate, since you so that you don't have to use copy and paste. And then I'll do my quantity down along my x-axis. And so you can again do this without whatever font, whatever color you want. I always like to just keep it simple and basic. I try to leave the colors to the things that the kids need to focus on the most, like the um, like the the curves and everything. So, so I got my labeling out of way for my graph. And then from there, what I want to do is create my curves and so um, I again like to keep this really pretty simple what I always do go up here to insert and find shapes uh, and once you find shapes you can go in here and it's in my recently used but you just got a line or you can go down to lines and it's the first one here and we'll take this line and let's say first we want to make our demand curve and so we'll just click on our graph make a downward sloping demand curve and I'll just kind of make it whatever size here um, and uh, so there we have our line. Now, a couple things we um, that I like to do with this, again, there's so many different ways to do this. I'm just kind of walking through my workflow. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying it's the only way by any means. It's just what I think um, I found that works best for me. And so um, take as much of it as you want or as little of it as you want. So but what I like to do is I like to take this line. And um, if you notice over here, um, if, if this... Uh, doesn't pop up here uh, what you can do is take this line and you can right click it and go to format shape I think it might be format object in Windows uh, and then this little side panel pops up uh, with a lot of helpful things um, again you don't have to do it this way but for me all the time I don't know why demand curves are blue supply curves are red it's kind of the way I always do it and so here uh, I'm going to make sure my line is blue 
And then from there, I'm going to take this up to at least um, three point width. So it's a little bit more visible on there and easy to see. I don't want it to be overwhelming on the graph, but I want to make sure that it's easy to be seen. I actually, I'm even going to take this one up to 3.5 just for today. Um, so I've got my demand curve here. Now, a couple other things that I like to do because I think it's helpful. Again, not mandatory by any means, but I think it's helpful. One, visually, if you notice the caps on this are flat, um, or as they, I think they call them mitered on here, um, just these flat caps. I like it to be round, and so what I'll take there is I'll take cap type to round, join type to round, uh, and then it just makes the ends of your line round, which is nice. Um, depending on elasticity, obviously, like you can like you can adjust this to be as, as flat as you want, as steep as you want. Um, for kind of just my basic supply and demand curve, I like to put it at a 45 degree angle. Easy way to make sure you have it at whatever angle you want, and in this case, say I want a 45 degree angle. Um, what I do is you go up here along format shape and go to this far right one where it's size and properties and click size. Um, here, if you notice, my height is 4.15. My width is 4.13. Uh, if I want it to be exactly 45 degrees, um, I think I remember from geometry that uh, if those are the same. Uh, and so let's get this to, we'll just do four point, uh, you know what, I'll do 4.3 and 4.3. Uh, and there I have guaranteed a 45 degree angle with my line. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is this box right here where it says lock aspect ratio. If I click that, what it'll do is no matter how I resize this, it'll maintain that 45 degree angle. Like I can just move this up and down and make it as short of a line as I want or as long of a line as I want. The reason I like this is because later on, if you, if and when you do shifts and you want to make sure like your lines stay parallel to one another and have that same angle, that locking that aspect ratio will maintain uh, that uh, same angle for both and therefore ensure that they are parallel. Now, again, like we always tell our students, uh, make sure you label. And so what I'll do is I'm going to take this, just this text box, I'm going to duplicate it, um, which again is command D or control D. Um, and uh, I'm going to change this and I'm going to put this as D, um, D1. And I want to make this one a subscript. And so in Mac, I know it shows up on the ribbon here to do that subscript. I think in Windows, um, you have to open another little box here. It's got like a corner um, menu thing you can click. Make that subscript. And then also, just to make sure that they know what we're doing with what this um, label represents, I'm also going to change the text to that blue of my line. Um, and if you don't think it's visible enough, you can change the size. I sometimes will bold those to make it a little bit easier to see. And there I have my demand curve. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make my supply curve. Uh, and so again, I'm going to go up here to insert shape, make another line. And this time I want to make my upward sloping supply curve. And I'm going to give it a lot of the same properties I did with my demand curve. Uh, so for example, um, if I go over here to sizing, I want it to be 4.3 by 4.3 to maintain an upward sloping 45 degree angle. Um, also, what I want to do is I want to take this, and I'm, for me, like I said, I don't know why, supply curves are always red, and I'm going to take the width up to 3.5. Uh, and so there I have my supply curve. Now the last thing, also cap type round, join type round. And again, there now I have my demand and my supply curves uh, together. Um, and uh, also want to add my label, and so I'm going to duplicate this label, bring it up, and again, I'm going to take that D and change it to an S, take the color of those and go back home and make that red and boom there we go now another thing you might be asking is you're like oh man like what if my curves look like this and they're like not lined up how i want them to be and i want them to be symmetrical or whatever great here's the way uh that this actually changed my life when i found this out um i try to kind of like eyeball it as best as i can but from there what you do is if you take um click the demand curve so the the blue line, hold shift and click the red one. You'll see that both the demand curve and the supply curve are selected here. And you can see that because there's these green nodes at the end of my lines. If I go up here to arrange, um, this, like I'll tell you, for making graphs and stuff, this arrange box changed my life. And so if you go to arrange, um, I'm gonna go down here to a line. Now, if you notice, there's kind of like two sections of a line. So there's here a line left, center, right, and a line top, middle, bottom. Um, so basically this, uh, over here is aligning stuff um, vertically. The next one is aligning it horizontally. And since I want these to um, match up, um, what I want to do is I want to align them both on the vertical um, center axis and the horizontal center axis. And so what I'm going to do is first I'll just click both of them, align center. Then once I align center, go back to arrange, align middle, 
and now I've got them lined up perfectly. Now, if I also want, like, I don't know if you notice, we'll see this in a second with the equilibrium, like I want it to be lined up on some grid line as well. What I can do is just kind of select those um, and I'll arrow them just kind of with my arrow keys and uh, eyeball it to where I want it to be just to get as close as I can. And, you know, you know, that looks pretty good. So um, I don't try, I don't do anything fancy with that. And then I'll just re uh, kind of align these uh, labels here and they are back where I want them to be. And there we go. Now, the last thing I like to always make sure I label on here is equilibrium. And what I do for that, um, once again, is I'll go to shapes and this time I'll do a circle. Now, again, I don't like doing anything like overly distracting when it comes to this. And so what I just like to do is I make a little circle um, and I don't want to make it too big, but I do want to make sure it's symmetrical. So when I format this shape, I'm going to take it both to um, let's do this. We'll go 0 0.17 uh, for both of those. 0.17 so then it is a perfect circle um, I'm also going to format this a little bit more and uh, I'm going to I'm going to remove that line and I'm going to make that circle be um, kind of like a, a charcoal black and I also want to put this dead in the middle now how can I make sure that this is spot on in the middle where I want it to be well you can actually see on here that as of right now I have those orange lines uh, that kind of form almost look a, like a bullseye looking thing a crosshair looking thing and so that tells me it is aligned, but let's say I just put it right there and I'm like, well, I want to make sure that this is once again aligned, um, you know, with my other curves. Well, I'll put it, just, let's say right here, and I'm going to select that circle along with my supply and my demand curves. I'm going to go back up here to my home uh, tab, arrange, align, center, arrange, oops, align, middle. And once I've done that, now that circle is aligned on the vertical and horizontal axis of those curves, and it's dead centers where my demand curve and my supply curve intersect. We've got a great equilibrium there. Then finally, um, I like to, once again, align the equilibrium with my axes. And the way I'll do that is I'll ins insert one more shape. I'll insert a line. And what I'll do is I'll, again, just kind of eyeball it, make sure that it stays horizontal when I'm aligning it with my y-axis. Um, and I have that line right there. I'll also take the width of this, maybe up to like, I don't know, 1.5, 1.75, something like that. And if you notice, I don't connect it all the way to my axis or my dot. And the reason I do that is because I turn this into a dashed line. And so if you go over here to uh, the format of the shape, um, there is a dash type. And I turn the dash type to a dash. And you can do whatever one you want. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I like this one. Uh, but if you notice now, my, my dash line is blue, and that's a little distracting. So I'm going to change it from blue to uh, just kind of like, um, like a darker gray right there. So you can see it. It's subtle. It's still there. It aligns my uh, equilibrium. And then I'm also just going to take that. And I'm going to duplicate it. Control copy, control paste, or just control D to duplicate. And I'm going to make sure I have that lined up with my x-axis as well. And there we go. We have those dotted lines to line up each axis. The last thing we got to do is we have to label our equilibrium. So again, I just already got to label made and I'll change that from D1 to Q1. I'll change that color to mm, kind of like a, like again, charcoal. Um, again, you can do whatever color you want for that. Um, and I'll make sure that that is aligned center there. And then I'll take that duplicate it again for my uh, X axis here, or sorry, Y axis here. And I'll change it to P1. And there you have it. You have a supply and demand graph everything labeled you got your axes labeled your equilibrium labeled you got your curves labeled different colors um and there you go now you might be like holy cow that was a lot of work just to make one graph do i have to do that every t time the thing i like about doing this is kind of once you put in the work once uh it makes the work a lot easier later because let's say i have a new slide here that has no graph on it what i can just do is come here highlight all of this control copy go to the next slide control paste and there you go that slide is right there uh, and that uh, with a with a new graph on it, and so once you put in the work once, it makes it a little bit easier. And so, those are kind of the big things I would say for just kind of making a graph like a supply and demand graph. Um, but there's a lot of cool features you can do with this and add to this and change with it. Um, and that's what I'll go into within the next couple of videos.